One of the major benefits of using the Moodle learning management systems for delivery is that it affords you enough flexibility as regards the type of learning resource or learning materials that you can make available to your learners. So in this video, we'll look at a few of those resources, check out how to add them to the course page in a neat and professional manner, and touch a little on some activities that we can also add to the course page. So without much ado, let's jump right into the demo. So the first resource that we'll be starting with is the page. I believe we're familiar with this page or with the course page by now. So how I got here is that I logged in to the virtual learning environment. I clicked on my course. And in my case, the title of my course is Demo Course Resources and Activities in Moodle. And now I'm about to add the page resource to this course page. Of course, we know that anytime we are on the course page and we want to make an addition or we want to make a change to the course page, we need to ensure that the edit mode is turned on. To do that, I'll go right to the top right hand corner of my page and toggle this on. Now that my edit mode is turned on, I am ready to begin adding components to this course page. So of course, to add a page resource to this course page, I'll click on add an activity or resource, go to resources, and I can see all the resources here present. We are about to add a page. Now, what does a page do? And how do I find out if it is the right thing for me to use this time you will notice that there is an info icon right next to these resources so to get more understanding of what these resources are and what you can use them for you click on them and this page will open it up to tell you just what you can use this for so let us add this page to our course page. So in my case, and for the purpose of this demonstration, I want to add a text and a video just to show you how you can make use of the page. When you come to this page, you will notice that you have first the name, then a description, and then your page content. Now, what you want to have on this page will come under the page content and not under the description. So let's start. I'll just give this a title, page one. Please ensure that you describe what you have inside the page to those who will be interacting with them. So now that we've done that, I do not have anything to put in the description. So I'll come here to my page content. Now, assuming you have a course where you have a lot of video resources on YouTube that you want your students to watch, placing them on the course page may make your course page very long. But by the time you put these videos into pages, you will have a shorter course page but your resources will still be well organized within your course page so i am going to add a text to this page content box so i'll just copy this dummy text and place it here i also want to make a video available on this page so to do that you insert a video and we are done with this step you can come here and decide to change this activity completion to show activity as complete when the conditions are met and that simple condition is that the students must view this activity to complete it and then we'll go on to save and display. Now, 
under page one, I have this text and I have this video. So I can choose to have many more videos in this page. And by the time I go back to my course page, you find out that I only have this page that I've added, but inside this page, I can have a couple of videos and a lot of text instead of having those videos right on the course page. The next resource on our list is the book resource. Now the book resource is very similar to the page and just as the name implies, you can have chapters and sub chapters within a book. Basically, a book is a combination of pages. So I can choose to use the book to house my videos and then have the student navigate through the book one after the other to view the videos. Or I can choose to use the book to house texts and images explaining certain concepts. Let's quickly check how to use this. So by the time you click on it, you can name it. Let me just give a quick name, book one. You are free to put a description if you if you wish and an activity completion. You can leave the rest as they are and then click on save and display. Clicking on save and display now brings us to this point where we now begin to add the content of the pages that will be inside this book. So I have chapter one. Let me just put this as my chapter title. And then I can have my content here. And you can also have a video here like we did when we created the page resource. So I go insert, put my video here, put the link for, to the video here and insert media. I'll scroll down and save changes. So here I am being brought to this book and the title of my page, first page is chapter one. So you can have this, you can rename this to whatever content you have for your page. You see that I can also have many more videos here the same way we have it on the page. To add more pages, all you need to do is to come to this table of contents here and then you click on the plus icon here to add a new chapter after chapter one. So I can go ahead and name this chapter two. Put my content here. save the changes and you see that we are now in chapter two and i also have a button that can take me back to the, the previous page which is chapter one i can bring out the table of content by clicking on this arrow here that opens the block drawer and add a new page under here I can also change the position of chapter two. For example, if I want chapter two, which is the title of my page number two, to come as the first page on this book resource, all I'll do is to click on this arrow button, this arrow here once, and it will take the chapter two page and make it the first page in this book resource. Now let's go back to our course page. So the next resource we'll be adding is a file. Take for example, you have a PDF or a PowerPoint file or even a Word file that you want to make available to the learners in this course. How do you do that? It is a very simple process. It's the same way we added the page and the book that will also add a file to this course page. So we click on add an activity or resource, select resources, 
and then you select file so you give the file a name so what is the name of the file you want to add to this course page in my own case I am adding file 1 to this course page so how do we add a file to this course page you can do it in two ways the first way which is the simplest is the drag and drop you just drag the PDF or the Word document into this box here and then the second way is to use the file picker so let's use the drag and drop just so you can see how it works so I have my file here and this is file 1 I'll resize this to make it smaller and all I'll do is to take this and drag it right into this box here and drop it and you'll see that my file will be uploaded to this course page it is as simple as that now let me delete this and show you how to add it using the file picker so you take your mouse to this point here and you see it titled add you click on add then you click on upload a file then you click on choose file you navigate to where to the folder where you have kept your file you select it I double clicked on it to select it and then you click on upload this file so these are the two ways you can use in uploading a file to your course page I use the PDF here but you can upload but it's the same method you use in uploading a PowerPoint file a Word file or a or an Excel file or whichever kind of file you want to make available to the learners of this course page we have a few options here automatic embed first download open open and then in pop-up so you can play around with any of these options for the first download you can have the student download this file simply by clicking on it so once they click on it it forces the students to download it so you can play around with any of the options to check out whichever one suits your purpose so I'll leave it on automatic for now and you also have the option to show the size of the file and also show the type of the file so this will give the information of the file size and the file type to whoever will be interacting with this material you can leave these other options as they are and then you click on save and return to course now you can see that we have added a file to my, to the course page and this file is 77.3 kilobytes and it is a PDF document this is because we checked those two boxes that instructed the system to show the file type and the file size. Now, assuming you have a couple of files that you want to add to the course page, do you add them all on this course page as we have it here? No, it will make your course page lengthy. It will make your course page look unorganized so how do you add many files just into one resource on your course page you do that using the folder so the next resource we'll be looking at is the folder so to save time we will not add the folder onto our course page because it's the same process we would use in adding a file the only difference here is that when adding a folder you can put in as many files as possible irrespective of the kind of files you have you can even combine files pdfs and 
PowerPoint and Word files together in one folder. And then you have the option to have the student download everything at once or have them view it individually. So what that does is that it makes your course page neater and makes it look more professional. So the next resource we'll be looking at here is the URL resource. Now let's click on add an activity or resource to find out what this URL resource is all about. So I'll click on resources and we can see that the URL enables us to provide a web link as a course resource. So you can provide the web link to a particular website you want your students to visit as a resource on the course page. So how would this be possible? Very simple. While you're in the add and resource page, you click on URL and you see here that you have three boxes. The first box is the name of the link URL resource you're about to add, the external URL itself, that's the web link itself, and then a description. So I can put this as link one, put the external resource as this, and then put a description as this. With this done, you can also come down to change how you want it to appear and look at these other options to see if there's anything you can change there. But to save time, please just leave them as they are and go back to doing what you're doing. So with this, we have successfully added our web link using the URL resource. So how will it look like when a student interacts with this resource? If I click on the link, it will open up showing me the link and by the time I open it this way, it takes me right into the VigB site. So what if I want to ensure that the student stays on this site? So let's go back to settings and then we click on appearance and then in the display, we we'll say in pop-up and then we save and display. So by the time we click on this link again, we'll still stay on this course page or on the virtual learning environment here, but the website itself will open in a pop-up box. So that student can interact with it from here. And then once he or she is done, closes it and returns back to the virtual learning environment. You're already familiar with the label. So we'll leave that out. And then we'll just talk briefly on the IMS content package. Now, in summary, the IMS content package is a sort of resource that can be reused on any kind of learning management system. It behaves just like this COM package in the activities tab. So we are not going to be relating much with this resource, but you can click on the information icon to learn more about the IMS content package. We have looked at the resources that we can add to our course page within the Moodle learning management system. Now let's briefly go through the activities we can add to our course page. So for activities, you can find out that we have a lot of activities to add to our course page. For the sake of time, we are not going to be looking at a lot of them. Other videos will treat how to add the quiz and how to add the assignment to your course page. But in this video, we'll just pick the second one here called the chat. We'll try to add it and then we'll look through how this lesson activity works. Now, the lesson activity is also a very rich activity that you can add to your course page. So let's add a chat to the course page. As said before, you can click on the information icon to get to understand what the chat does. So with these, you can chat in real time with students and they can also chat with each 
other. But in this kind of chat, as the teacher of this course, you are in full control of whatever happens within this chat. So let's name our chat. Let's chat one quickly. We can give a quick de description. And then at this point, you can now set a chat session. So this chat session is the time that you as the lecturer or as the facilitator for this course would be online to chat with students. And then you also have the option to save sessions. So you can decide not to ever delete messages of the chat in the chat activity, or you can set a day in which the chat clears. You can also choose who can view past session. You can choose to make this no or make this yes. You can leave this as they are. And once you're done with that, you save and display. So let's enter the chat to see how it looks like. It comes out in a pop-up box and then you can send a message as the facilitator for this class. So when a student sends a message, you will be able to see the name of the student and the message that student has sent. So the lesson activity is a very rich activity on Moodle. So it helps you set a structured lesson path for students. And you can make it in such a way that it is so interactive that it incorporates knowledge checks, quizzes, pages, branch scenarios, and a host of others. So I have gone ahead to do something very quick just so you'd see how this lesson activity works. So on your own, you can play around with this to see if it's something that you can adopt on your course page. So I'll click on the structured lesson here. And you can see that I have some content here. Now let me try to view this as a student. You can see here that this lesson has a bar that shows the completion as a student. So by the time the student is done taking or reading this, he can click on this next button to see the types of library. And then can also jump or go through to the next page. So you have the option to lay out other buttons here that lead into different pages with content. So I can click on this to go to the content for that button. You also have the option to create a previous page button for every page you create. Now, in order to be able to create a lesson, it must have been something that you have structured before coming to lay it out here. So it takes a lot of planning. But if you do it right, you'll find out that you will create a very interesting learning experience for your students. So let me briefly run through this so you can see how it works. And then after this, you also have the option, like I said before, to add a knowledge check. And you can structure this knowledge check in such a way that if the student gets this question wrongly, as I'm about to do, if I click on continue as a student, it takes me back to the lesson that treated that question that I just answered. So by the time I go back to the school library and take the knowledge check again, if I click on the correct option, you find out that I have a feedback telling me that I can proceed to the next page. And when I click on continue, it will take me to the next item on the path that has been set already. So like I said, you can only use this lesson activity if you have spent time planning how you want this lesson to turn out. So in my case here, I have come to the end of the lesson and it gives me my grades, tells me I've completed 100% of the lesson and then gives me the opportunity to review the lesson or go back to the course page. So in this video, we have looked at how to add resources to our course page and also looked at 
how to add an activity to the course page and a quick overview of how the lesson activity works. Thank you so much for watching.